what a beautiful day to see all of you. Welcome to our mini block party. Is that exciting? Yes. Six months we're going to do from July to December, and it's called the Zilly Ann Block Party. Yay! So here's your three teachers. I'm Eleanor Burns. This is my sister. Patricia, Patty, Patricia Nagel, and Teresa Barnes, and we each have a job to do in this program, so it's going to be really fun. So, Zillian is a very special thing. Zillian is actually the daughter of the man who founded the town we grew up. Is that exciting? Oh. Zillian, so we grew up in Zillianopo, Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania. It was a one-horse town. There was a traffic light, but I was still afraid to cross Main Street. <laughs> really, it was really scary. And so in, it goes back to 186 when um, the Baron from Germany, I have to keep on looking up his name, Baron Detmar Bass, came from Germany in 1802. And he, he found Zillianople, he founded the town, it was so great. He brought his daughter over a couple of years later. She had gotten married, her name is Zilly Ann, and we put her right front center spot. And I think that Eric has it too. That looks really good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And she had married Philip Bass, Philip, Philip Pazavent, and she packed up 70 boxes of her stuff. It was all quilt supplies. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought along her two prize sheep, and she moved into a little log cabin right on Main Street in Zillianople. Is that a cool story? Yeah. Sure but the best thing, I'm not related to her, <laughs> no. But the cool thing is, is that she got to have a lot. Imagine this, a lot from Main Street clear to the street behind her, and that was Clay Street, and in between she planted roses, flowers, vegetables, and so we have this new line of fabric that's just full of roses. Do you want to see it? Yes. Okay, and now, Teresa, I said I wasn't going to keep on turning all around. Yep, this is have, it. Oh, Ooh, we oh, can all yes. fondle it, huh? Yeah. So this is what's really cool. Guess what this is called? Mm -hmm. The Main Street line. Oh. <laughs> These are all the dark colors. These are all from Main Street, and Patty has the uh, soft colors. Grandview Avenue. And that's actually the street we grew up on. Oh. Is that cool? Grand view. So they're they're yeah, all really so fun, cool. beautiful with the florals, yes. and there's a stripe and there's plaids. Let me see. I think that if I open this can, up, can you? There. Oh, yeah. I'll put it on my lap. Go oh, look. <laughs> and each one, look at the prints. Is that beautiful? This is gorgeous, huh? This is really different, the large scale. Lots of fussy cuts in there. Yes. The, and the stripe. The wide and the narrow stripe. Is that beautiful? Yes. That is beautiful. Okay, Patty, you get to show all of your light colors, or do I have two? It's really good right here. Okay, we'll do it this way. Can this, you flip it? Yeah, this line is called the teal, which I see kind of see an aqua and then we have kind of the creamy color I think it creamy was, background creamy yeah. backgrounds and then more roses and then these are the larger scale wouldn't that make a nice fussy cut whoa okay. everybody you have to learn how to do this fussy <laughs> oh, okay. cut Patty travels and, this, and and she's not usually in class with me and I always make fun I make everybody go Fussy cut. No, when I travel, they know about that, <laughs> and they always feed. They just give it right back to me. So it, it goes. And this is my favorite color. It matches my home. That kind of that aqua color. 
the big fussy cut. And then if you notice the stripe alternates between a wide and a narrow stripe. Is that beautiful? Which is That's fun. Beautiful. Yeah, and you see this space right between the two? This is where you cut it apart. Yep. And we're going to talk about that later. Yes, we've okay. got so much to talk about. It's really cool. Okay. So, Zilly Ann, I just want to tell you about when we went to high school, our yearbook was called the Zilly Ann, after Zilly Ann. Ah, and now my dad, believe it or not, my dad's yearbook is behind us. And Teresa's going to hand everything to me. I told her I don't like to keep on turning oh, around. The old one, yes. The old one, I'm going to show Eric. 1937, wow. Zilly Ann. Do you believe that? Zilly Ann. That's, it was just every, everything was Zilly Ann. And I have to tell you, I asked my mom, how did I get my name? My mother said, you were named after your dad's old girlfriend. <laughs> and I felt terrible my whole life until I found my dad's. Zillian and I just looked up Eleanor oh. and guess what this is what they were class officers together oh. they were girlfriend and boyfriend they were class officers <laughs> my dad was the treasurer and she was the secretary of the junior oh. high class and I, I looked at this and I cannot figure out which one is my dad <laughs> and I can't so I don't know who which one was Eleanor but she helped, she, she yeah. taught my dad how to speak English. She came from Germany when he was just nine years old oh. and third grade, couldn't speak a word of English. He said, Eleanor, when, when I grow up, I'm going to name my daughter after you. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yes. And I just have to show you my cool dad. And see this pretty cool. Is that work good? Uh, yeah. Here's my dad, and he played football. He was really cool in high school. Is that good? And this is my mom, and I swear she is trying to be sexy sitting there. <laughs> Don't you? I think she was. She's pretty. But there is a line that's named after Irma. Her flowers, her flowers. And I guess we have to get into our grandma. Huh? So you all got a pattern uh -huh. that is basically named after our grandmother, but I have to tell you a secret. It says Elsie's flower table topper. Uh -huh. Tech spelled the name wrong. She's really Elise. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to put Elise on this pattern. Elise's t uh, flower table topper and Merritt said, that looks weird. No, Al, you have to call her Elsie the rest of your life. <laughs> if my cousins listen to this, I'm going to feel really bad. <laughs> and your aunt, too. And my aunt. Yeah, I mother. know. Yeah. If she finds out, don't yeah. tell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> would you like to know. see? Yes. Yes. Would you like to see the quilt? Oh, yes. 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 Ah. Oh. Did you find your yearbook, Al? No, I oh, couldn't okay. find it. I think. Do you want to see my yearbook? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll hold this down. Don't okay. look at it. Okay, show her your book. I wonder if you can guess what were our class, our school colors. Oh. <laughs> Purple and gold. Yeah, good colors. And I graduated in 64. And I, I did find my yearbook, and inside it was all my important papers, my report card, oh, wow. my, my graduation certification. And this piece of paper, the first time I was ever published, was in this book. And I was on the art staff, and this was my drawing for the underclassmen section. And it's our, um, our uh, mascot was, guess what, a bear, golden bears. So <laughs> this is the, um, angel, were they devils or angels? Oh. And this was the original art, I still have it. Wow. And you That's remember cool. the cheer, but I didn't remember. Oh, we are, oh, do I have to sing it? You have to sing it with me. I don't remember We it. are the golden bears, mighty, mighty golden bears. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are. So we tell them we are the golden bears, 
Good, thank Did you. Did you guys go to Zillion Opal High School too? <laughs> <laughs> but every high school did it. But I, I just want to show you my favorite page. I was on the girls' basketball team, and I was a forward. Now remember, my father was an athlete. I have really strong football legs, player. and he was a football player and a basketball player. Well, I could jump higher than any of those girls on the team. <laughs> I, I know that's my hand, because that's my head, so that's my pride. Okay. okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Want to talk about our grandmother? Sure. She was so cool. Do you have a picture of our grandmother? Oh, there's our grandmother. She, she was the best grandmother. She had her chickens and fed her chickens, and she also had beautiful flowers, too. And this is a little tip. She took her watering can, and she put the eggshells from all of her chicken eggs in her, in her watering can. She broke them up, and then she watered her plants with them. They were the nicest plants ever. What a good idea. Do you want to see our project? Yes. You thought we were going to do quilts, huh? <laughs> okay, so now would it be best just to hold it up, Orion, or stand no. up? Is that good? Yes, that's pretty. Ah, oh, is that pretty? So we're starting small. This is, am I right side up? Look at the fuzzy cut right in the center. And then the plaid. Um, and the stripe around it. There's techniques to learn here. We have a fussy cut. You have a you have a six and a half inch fussy cut ruler. Teresa's going to hand it. That's her job. Okay. So we're going to be doing okay. the fussy cut first. And for the center. For the center, and okay. then the stripe. And there's miter matching stripes. That's good. And then around the outside. This is actually. The piece of fabric that's named after. <laughs> I'm going to Elsie. Oh, you can say Elise. <laughs> Elise. <laughs> Elise, this is her fabric. And then around the outside edge, we finished with the wave. And that's going to be on our ruler, the scallop, vine, and I've wave ruler. And look at the quilting on the back. Ooh. Is that nice? Very, very pretty. So this one has the stripe in it, but I gave Patty just in case. I We should really trade because she's, she's the slow, fussy one, and I'm the fast one. She has my my quilt now. <laughs> oh, so I do? you're sitting on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that one's oh I'm no, sorry. Actually, no. she made this one. Oh. She made them both. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I got to be all honest three. with you. They're, they're so fast. <laughs> she made everything. Yeah, I made about five of them. Oh, really? Now... I know some of you don't have that border stripe, and some of you don't even like to miter corners. What do you think? Yep. If, if you do or you don't, we'll show you how to do it. But if you really don't want to do the miter, you can do the same quilt with just any fabric. You know, just, oh, okay. just cut. It's a three and a quarter inch strip, and you can just cut whatever you like, and still you can still put a fussy cut in the middle or not fussy. Mm -hmm. So that's the... Um, and show the back is beautiful. It is. Amy Potter did all of the quilting for us. Okay. Is that nice? Ooh! Now, beautiful. I, I hope you noticed the little quilt on the table. Yes, I, I'm thinking I'm going to stand very, up now. Very soft. Should we... And I made this as a wedding gift for my niece. She's getting married, and when she bought her condo, everything was blush pink. She painted the door blush pink. Uh -huh. So I saw this collection here at Quilt in a Day. There's a, a whole big line. You can see parts of it here. And I thought of Katie immediately when I, when I saw it. I thought about myself, too, because I love, I yeah, love the good. blush pink. That's good. That's good. So okay, we, we're, we're stripping up here. You ready? Oh, oh. okay. And you can see I started out fussy and I couldn't stop. Everything is fussy 
Oh, but in the, in the, in the um, instead of that horizontal stripe, I just put a little vertical stripe. So I don't know if you noticed, the others have the wave edge. Oh, the wave. Or if you prefer a scallop, you can use the same ruler and get the scallop edge. So that's lots of possibilities. Beautiful. Okay. Don't sit down. Oh. <laughs> I, okay. the, the stage crew has taken us <laughs> apart here. Okay. So, you know, Patty mentioned um, the scallop, the wave and the scallop, but if you look all around the room, we put up fresh quilts, and guess what's on the outside edges of the quilts? Scallops. All the scallops and every sense. And so, we started the scallop ruler, the wave ruler, and the vine ruler with this quilt. Oh, yeah. Here. And Patty up. said, do you remember what year we did? What oh, was it? Magic Vine. Magic Vine. Anybody remember? It's a blur to me. What year, what year was it? What year, Patty? Oh. Are you looking it up on your, yeah. on your well, cell? It was before 2006. Before 2006. Long time ago, but this is beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we did all the vine flowers and then around the outside edge. And this time, the... the um, the, the, the wave has rickrack in it. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah. Very cute. Okay, so now, okay, Teresa, can you take this away too? She's doing a good job, huh? Good, good. All Yay. right. So, let's see. We have a plan, right, Patty? Well, We're going to start. Let's look around. <laughs> well, I've got some fabric. Is that fabric. a start? Start Yay. with fabric. Fabric. Yay. <laughs> My favorite color, of course. Okay. And let's see what's inside. Oh, I see fussy cuts. Yeah. I see big fussy cuts. <laughs> this is just um, a fat quarter. And we did have the, all of the, um, the pre-cuts, but they disappeared. But you can actually get a fat quarter pack. To get started, and our yardage still has not come yet. Look at this. Lots of fussy cuts. Whoa, light and dark. Woo. Okay, so, and I have a rotary cutter for you. I've got a fussy cut. We've got a fussy cut ruler, and you will be getting yours, but we just didn't get them arrived from the printer yet. But you got something that you can use. Okay, so show so, that one. Uh, and you can always uh, refer to our quilt. We're gonna start in the center, six and a half inches, and you can kind of shop around for the perfect fussy cut. Um, I, I like this is the one I selected for that quilt. I like it because you can see the nice little bouquet, mm -hmm. and then around the outside, there's a little bit of background kind of gives it some space, or you could go with more of a dense flower uh, that fills the space, or if you don't have this fabric, I wonder where Teresa went. <laughs> <laughs> she needs you. Do you want to see some other ideas? Teresa said, that what, you can get, she said what am I going to do? You can get Lots. these right here today at Quilton a Day. <laughs> you dress to match the oh, fabric. Oh, you look so pretty. What do you want? Yeah, why don't you start with that? Okay. Okay. And you know what? When I, sh when I go shopping, I take my fussy cut with me. <laughs> That's serious. Because this is just I take my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's okay. You're you're right. I do also take my credit card. That's you're very wise for my older sister. You're very wise. Okay. You had yeah. to tell them. I'm sorry. No, we're we're she's I'm older. I'm a little bit older. <laughs> Okay, so do you see how nicely that fits into the six and a half? And if, um, and if you don't want this one, we have the same fabric in a pink background. And then we have different, Look at this. different, yeah, different really scales that you like to mix up scales and values. 
and there's a little stripe. So I guess we're going to trade with Teresa. Oh, if, look at all these fussy cuts. Yeah, I, we'll take care of it. I was um, yes, snooping around the fabric in the back, and I found this box. Do you like to do that? Yeah. Okay. She pulled the plastic off yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, look at the size of that. And here you can see fits nicely inside that space. And you know how to center it. This ruler is so perfect. It X marks the center. And then you see your quarter inch uh, allowance for your seam allowance. So you might catch a little bit of the other little vines, but that's OK. But see, oh, you have another size, too, a smaller size oh, right. for fussy cut. Yeah, and if this doesn't work for your for this quilt, we have a quilt coming up. We use three and a half inch fussy cuts, so um, you can cut we the can whole use piece all up. sizes. There's here's the dark one, the dark background, and you know if you start with a dark center square, then your framing. Notice the second round. You want to point L. The second round. Good, Vanna. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the second round, I'm sure you would want to go light. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of selection. And then here's another one that caught my eye. Um, this one also, you yeah. can choose. It's like a whole bouquet. Yeah, in a, a dark. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole collection that goes with these pieces. And if you go into the store, they can point you in the right direction to find the companion. So here's... Now that they'll on, be on the shelf calling, Fussy Cut! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can take that away. And then there's one more group. It's a Riley Blake that I, yeah, you, I ben. just couldn't resist. If you just want to bring out Look one how of the, pretty I that couldn't that resist the, the corals the and the teals. Yeah. And those are not necessarily, they're not isolated flowers, but you could still do a nice grouping from that. So you got some ideas. Oh, and don't forget your holidays. You know, you like to decorate mm -hmm. Christmas, um, fall with a different colorway for your table. Okay. Are you going to cut? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is this your, is this your <laughs> show? <laughs> Did you forget to cut? <laughs> yes, but thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Okay. Well, I get excited about fabric. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Doesn't take much. <laughs> okay. So we'll just uh, kind of find the center. You can kind of shift around. And there's three flowers, so I kind of went to the center. And then um, you all know how to cut, don't you? But I can do it because Eleanor wants to sew, so I better... Well, I asked her if she likes to use a turnable, and she said she just likes to walk around the corner. Yeah, you that's what I do. I just walk and then around just the walk table. Around. I can walk faster than I can turn that table. So yeah, and be careful. See, like that—that that would scare me. I know. Usually, well, usually, usually I start on this side, but I'm in—I'm yeah. in front of the camera. Yeah, and you, you have so. to like. We'll, so we'll usually I go zip, that. zip, 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 just like that. So maybe if it were closer. Okay, so Patty, okay. now you used our six and a half inch um, fussy cut ruler, but we have another ruler that you might be able to use. Oh, yeah. I, you want to show that one? Sure. This is the, it's called the double square up. And it is six and a half inches. Yes, and you could use that to, cent to center and trim. With this one, you can cut three sides, and then you'll want to turn your ruler and get the fourth side. So that works, and that works good, too. There we go. Now would you like to sew? Yes, I'm yeah. ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I have been so busy having a birthday that I haven't been sewing at all. Happy birthday, ladies. Thank you, okay. thank you. Does, okay. Now, do those wrinkles bother you? Yes. Teresa, Teresa. would you press that, please? <laughs> and okay. you have 
That's the first round. Okay, open your pattern. Okay, guys, first round. All your yardage is there on the left for the little the little table topper. And I asked um, Faith if she would figure it out. So you could just think you could make a beautiful wedding gift for the top is like $37. And make it personal, wouldn't that be beautiful? It doesn't include the backing and the batting. Okay, so first I have the six and a half inch fussy cut. And now I need round two. One. Oh, round one. That's okay. Okay. And so this is six inch squares, two, two of them cut on the diagonal. And then. Okay, and I asked Patty, so how do you like to flip yours? And she said she sews them. Well, I sew them from the top. top. You sew them on because the top. Because I kind of center the point. I like to center the point, too. I like to center the point, and then I just do that. But but I like to do it this way because I like to let my tips hang out. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, e my gosh. E equally. Equally. Okay, so I'm just going to let them on both sides. Go ahead. And also, there is another reason, too. This is cut on the bias. And um, you don't tend to stretch your bias too much. I have my sew straight on my sewing machine. I'm using my stiletto. Okay, and so you're just going to uh, sew the triangles on both sides. This is called plaid. I kept on calling oh. it check. But this is oh. really a plaid from Benetech. It actually is a plaid. Yeah, it's a plaid. Yeah. And it comes in a number of different colors. I think like four different colors. There's the green, the blue, and then there's the uh, blue and the or the pink and the green together. Right. Yeah. Okay, Teresa, you're on. So I want you to set the seam. Oh, it feels so good to sew. <laughs> Okay, set the seam. <laughs> That's a jumper scrap. Give me that back. <laughs> we need a pair of scissors. And open. And press it over. Okay, you ready? You got your I'm ready to cut. trim. So I'm watching now for Patty because she just put in a new blade last night. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't Stand always it. close it. That's bad. She, That's what I say. She gets very upset. That's what I say. Ooh. Okay, we'll trim one side. Okay. <laughs> this is good. I'm going to have to fight to keep my show, huh? <laughs> no, 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 thank you. You'll never have to worry about that. I think it's fun having both of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it is really cool because Basically, we're pretty different in that um, I, I like, she always calls me the engineer, and you know that she was the art major, and she does all of the beautiful colors, and if you look all around, that's what you see in hanging in the studio, all the beautiful. And Teresa has her little, sh her little show up the stairwell, yes. so you can see Teresa's quilt. Don't tell anybody, but but you cut it kind of crooked. I know, so I, I, I did. So, <laughs> I did. You cut I, it crooked, so I so crooked. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say something, but well, you, you don't have to tell whenever you're on TV. You yeah. just you just move on and hope that nobody saw it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's true. That's okay. She said I didn't do the miter good. She had to take it over. I said I know, but it's hard whenever you're. You're talking and you're sewing and you're just, it's pretty amazing, right? Yes. Okay, so use the stiletto. Woo! Keep that seam laying flat. You're pressed away from the fussy cut. All right, girl. Teresa, your turn. Oops, oh, come what on. What a good cut. team we are, <laughs> huh? That's just good. pass you it around. Take us home with yeah. you. Yes, please. 
Yeah, we always say how long it takes us. Okay, set the seam open and press. All right, so it's wow. pretty generous yeah. around there, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, lots, lots of trim. Okay, your no. bottom, bottom illustration is great for this. We want to make it come out exactly nine inches. So we center on, you know what? The four What's half of nine? Half of nine. Four and a half. Four and a half. Oh, you did a good job. Oh, thank you. You did. I covered up for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so here you see four and a half lining up on two points, and then we'll trim two sides. Good. That's that endurance and then, blade. That's a good one. And that's then we'll turn one. it around and on the second second trim, place the nine inch on the newly trimmed edge and again four and a half you do good on the work. points. Cool. cool. It's better to have more than not enough, right? right. Yes. All right, cool. Okay. So now you get to turn the page. Beep. And now we're on the second round. You want to show? Point. Right second here. round. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 Okay. It's triangles again. And these were seven and a half inch squares cut on the diagonal. Okay. Am I to sew these? Is that the plan? That's the plan. Okay. It's the plan. It's the plan. Okay. So. So the one thing, whenever you're sewing with this on the top, you can see exactly where your stitches should be going, right across this seam right here. And then that makes it really good, especially if you like it sharp in the other side. I think personally, it's better that you don't go exactly on it it's better than going past it. Because if you cut off that point, then it just doesn't look good. So it's one side, turn it around, got the bias. This print, I want Eric to look close at that print. I think it is the sweetest little print. Just adorable. So, Reproduction, isn't it sweet? It's like, it's like the, it's real, the whole line is very Victorian, but yet, you know, you can, um, um, oh, Ryan said, oh, they're really, he said the students are going to really like this line, something about the young people that are doing kind of, say, a modern home with a Victorian look. Okay. So you want to press again, set the seam, okay, and flip it open, and how we look, is it crisp? It looks really nice. It looks really nice. So trim it off. Okay. Whoops. So anybody a beginner here? Oh. Uh, yes! Oh, I love wow. it! I was thinking maybe you were. Welcome. A lot of us have been quilting for how many years? This is 41 for me. How okay. many of you? Give a number. 35. 35. Uh, three. Three. Two. Two. Nineteen. I remember the first time some of you came in. I remember Barbara the first time oh. she came in and started sewing. So while Elle's finishing up, do you want me to uh, show you the, um, the stripe? Yes! And this, as we said, you can choose to stripe or not stripe. But this, if you're using this fabric, this Zillian collection, for this, fat, for this quilt, I trimmed oh. The quarter inch from the red line. Can you see it? You can see it really well, can't you? And it just gives it such a nice accent. So I'm just going to line up the quarter inch ruler line 
on the outside edge of that red stripe. And I find that this 14 inch ruler is really helpful when you're working on this quilt because sometimes you have a really long stripe to separate and it's just a convenient size to trim so far and then you can slide down and get the next um, the next of uh, the next length of fabric and that way it's it comes out at three and a quarter inches which is the suggested width um, and also if you do the non non stripe you can just cut any any fabric for example you can show that one Teresa uh, we saw that one earlier and if you cut it three and three and a fourth then all the other pieces fit together and we had we brought out the stripe to see how when it's um, when you get it off the bowl, it's a wide stripe and a narrow stripe with the lines in between. So you can really decide what width you want to um, cut your stripe. It's really fun. And so if you buy that yardage, we have one quilt that we're using the narrow part, and then again we'll be using the wide part. So nothing is wasted. Yes. Don't you love that? All right, Teresa, ready. Okay, you gonna square this one up, Pat? I can do that. Okay, what's your size? 12 and a half. 12 oh. and a half. How handy is that? Woo! This is a 12 and a half inch square up. 12 and a half inch, perfect. Okay. And yeah. one thing that I really like about our rulers is that they're simple to read and there's not too much on them, mm -hmm. and there's the quarter inch line on the top and the right side, so you can always make sure you don't cut off your seam allowance. Cool, how'd they do? Okay, let's Good. see. Is that beautiful? Okay, what's a half of six, a half of 12 and a half? Uh -huh. six and okay, quarter. six and a quarter. We'll place that right on the point. Ooh, that looks pretty good. I faked it. Yeah, you did. And all four, actually you can check all four edges. Mm -hmm. And it just really, really nice. Oh, you did good. I have experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a gift, Eleanor. You can do something with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I People ask me about it. I said, I just... I don't know. I, I have this gift. They say, how did you come up with that technique? And, did I mean, it just comes in the night or in the shower or what? It's, I don't know. It's, it's just, water. I get so excited, too, when it happens. I it's get like, all my ideas in, in water, washing dishes in the shower. You know, I'm I, a dishwasher. I, I dreamed up... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I dreamed up the name. We named our ruler the Square Up, the original Square Up. I designed it, and I named it the Square Up in the shower. And yeah, and before that, I had never heard that word used. Yeah, you, some of the the terminology that you know everybody just uses now. It's really fun. Yep. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. So. Do you like Beautiful. to, when you make your quilt, you turn on the fast forward button? We're fast gonna, forward. We're going to fast forward. Ta da! Okay. Whoa! This is the next round. Turn is, the page. Is the border. And Third round. And when you add the border, now we recommended a 5 8 inch uh, length of fabric, which... Um, 5 8 yards. Yeah, 5 8 oh, did I say yeah. inch? 5 yeah. 8 yards of fabric, which is about of the 22 inches long, which is actually more length than you need, but this gives you some extra, extra fabric to play with the, the lineup. Notice how they, kind of how they meet perfectly in the corner. And the way to get that to when that it's not a coincidence. You have it. to. Is that yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
You, the way you do that, um, getting your pattern to meet, is on each, each side, you start at the same center. Oh. And looking on this fabric, you might notice there's a lot of different little flowers, and you want to uh, consistently center the same flower at the center point. Oh. Oh. It's in there. Yeah, it's all in there. And the pictures are good. We made Merritt redo them. <laughs> okay, so um, the, and you do want to have uh, a stripe with four repeats, obviously. Or if you're doing just a, a non stripe, you just need two full strips to get your four sides. And the first thing I did was I, um, I decided on this, I, I like this little round f uh, flower because it's easy to find the center. There's just that nice little yellow dot. So I folded right down the center of the flower and then we'll just put a crease. And then line up that center crease with the point. See, you know what to do, yeah. Line it up and flip and pin. Now, previously, as you can guess, the other sides have all been added. Uh, in this, yeah, in the same technique, the same way. And then we're going to sew um, starting a quarter inch from the edge. Do you, you all know about that? To miter it? Maybe not. Well, if you don't know, we're, El Eleanor's going to give me a couple pins. And you can go ahead and mark, uh, mark a little dot, a quarter inch in. Do you want to mark it? No. <laughs> we, can use, we can use the marker. You can mark marker. it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll mark something later. Okay. You can mark your quarter because you can't really see it because. Yeah, that's right. So I, I find it's easier for me. This is what works for me. You might find mm -hmm. something that you, that you like better, but I like to just put a pin right there at each end and you can kind of smooth it out to get out any slack in your fabric and then go ahead and oh she put a dot oh i see what you did okay does that go it'll through? go away it'll go away good yes the, actually okay. you have another side that you just go oh, like that and you wipe oh oh i like that i better Ooh. get one of those Okay. I bet I know where you can get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then Elle's going to sew from one end to the next. And I do recommend sewing, stitching right along that red line because it's really hard. I tried it from the other side, and you, yeah. you end up with this really crooked sewing, and your red lines just don't come out crisp. Mm. Yeah. So, now this is the true test. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, start on the line. Start on the dot. Oh, with red. I like red. to back stitch. Okay. And on my baby lock, I have what's called a lock stitch. So you just put your needle down and it goes up and down right in the spot. Good. And then you can go forward. Okay. Okay, I got new glasses. Let's see if I could do this. Oh, yes. You're supposed to put your tongue out like this. Do <laughs> you have anything else you want to show while oh, I'm doing sure. this very carefully? Oh, sure. Well, um, I, I guess we're going to show how to miter the corner, and that you'll be done in about a minute. Yeah. Okay, and then Teresa's going to press, press out. Oh, let's mark it first. Okay, now... Let me look first. Yeah, we oh. have to check it. I, I know Eleanor does it everything perfect, but it's good to check. And <laughs> no, see, no. see, oh, you went a little too far, sweetie. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, we have a seam ripper. Never mind. No, d never mind. We'll, we'll check the other side. <laughs> oh. I didn't go far enough. <laughs> okay. okay. It, blame it on your new glasses, okay? Let me see. You can just go. 
just go one more stitch there. All right. And we'll tear this out and show it, do, do it this afternoon. They like it when I make a mistake anyway. So. Yeah. You never see me sewing in front of a camera. <laughs> Yeah, when I sew with Patty, she makes me unsew more than I get to sew. Honey, I think you went too far. <laughs> but try it. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Oh, no. It's good. Never mind. I'm just giving you a hard time. Okay. That was, she did it perfect. Thank and you. You can see, I don't know if how... Uh, you can see those two, um, the two corner, the two strips Here. meet. And if it's a little bit short, that's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't really, not really create a problem. Okay, now to miter the corner, we're going to fold the quilt on the diagonal, line up these two strips, and you kind of shift it so it lays nice and flat and do you notice right out here how you want these two stripes to line up mm -hmm. because wouldn't it be nice if those those corners came together perfectly that's what we're that's what we're going for and see if you can show eric this little point right here because this is really critical okay 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 if you, if you open that up and then just turn it towards him so he can see that because that's oh. kind of the trickiest part. Right I here? Think. Right yeah. here? Yeah. And then can you, is he getting a good view of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, those two do line up nicely. And then I'm going to go back and find my fussy cut because I, I just like the size of this ruler for doing the mitered corner. So we're going to place the diagonal line on the edge of the, of the strip. And then this line, this edge, you want to line up with the dot where, this two, where the two um, stitches come together. We're going to line that up. What do you think? Does that look Perfect. good? It, it's hard to see, but I think it looks good. And the illustration in the book is really good, too. Yeah. If you look at that on page uh, 7. Okay, and I'm going to try this Marvy marker here. You better. And draw the line from the outside edge to the dot. And that's where Eleanor's going to stitch along that line. But before she stitches, this is for precision piecing. Do you have a couple pins again? Uh-huh. Let's get your pins. Oh, I put them away. <laughs> Those two stripes, it would be really nice if they met perfectly. Mm -hmm. So again, we have these, these strips, red lines matching up, and then, whoop, that one's a little crooked. I know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> it is it's totally I'm bent. Gonna, these, are these are really fine pins. I love them, but they do bend easily. Yeah. But yeah. If, if they are so strong that they don't bend, then they don't go through the fabric well. Yeah. You got okay. one or the other. Yeah. Okay, so I'm pinning where the red line and the drawn line intersect. And I'm actually aiming for the, uh, the edge of the red stripe. And then you want to turn it over and check and make sure that you're at the same point. OK, if I pin it good, then Eleanor's going to look good when she sews it, right? <laughs> OK, so we pin that, that match point, And then again, down at that uh, where the quarter inch stitches meet, I'm going to pin it again. That looks pretty good. OK. Good. Now. This is a tense moment. Everybody's it very is. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to match when we open it up? Yes. She's stitching from the outside edge to the, to the inside, where the uh, seams come together. Oh, oh, who's whistling? Ah, 
I think this the corners on this look so adorable whenever you open them up. Patty likes to do all the really fine kinds of things, and I, I like to actually get stuff done a little bit quicker. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know her story. She had two active sons, busy, busy with the business, and I had a, a wonderful husband. He did his own laundry and cooking. So I had time to, to fuss. Okay. Oh. You need one more stitch. Oh, okay. Oh, but you could fake it. Put your you put your finger over. No, look. Oh, yeah. It? Well, you can press it, and look it'll how be. Good. Oh my gosh, you did great! Yay! Yeah, it looks. Don't, don't pull it look. open too much. Look. Oh, just about it. It fourth. looks really good. Now we'll just press it, and isn't if that you, a cute little curve on the top? Yeah. Let Let's um, press this open. And then we'll let Teresa, also you notice these two, this little corner, that would just press nice and flat. So you get this really good uh, flat edge. There you go, Teresa. Don't you love your job? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep, I brought my pink, my pink quilt so I could wear my pink sweater. <laughs> That looks very good. It does. It does. And that little uh, dark line looks like you spent sure, hours sewing a one eighth inch little piece in there, yeah. doesn't it? Don't uh -huh. tell anybody. Show the other corner. Oh, okay. Well, let me just say one more thing. What I really like to do, just to make sure it's perfect, take your ruler when you're done and line it up. Make sure you've got that. 45 degree angle. Is that 45? Yeah, or is it 90? Yeah, maybe it's 90. I don't know. Right angle. Just, just check to make sure it's all square. So that's the last step. And then we can trim it. But we're not going to trim it. And yeah. this is the trim side. Yeah, this side is trimmed. You can see it on You the can back. see that it's trimmed. <sighs> yeah. Go back and trim it. Yeah. Good. Woo. All right, we got through the stripe Yay. and the miter. And how about the wave? Okay. Like magic. All right. So, um, oh, you know what? We, we can't do the wave. We have to put a border on it. Yes. And I'm kind of embarrassed. Uh oh, because, don't be embarrassed. Well, I did this last night, <laughs> and it's not my best work. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The sewing is okay. The colors, you know, I didn't have an, I didn't have enough fabric to get a good selection, but you know, you can see. Um, it looks good. It does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. Don't <laughs> well, worry. I just wanted to show a different colorway. Okay, and this. Um, after you do your, your stripe, this is a 14 inch square cut on the diagonal. And we're, we're just going to show how to square it up because the ideal squaring size is 25 and a half inches. And I'll tell you the reason that works is if you don't like to do math. Who likes that? <laughs> Some of you do. Okay. You have a calculator now. Yeah, you have a calculator because the size of your, at, at this point, the size that your quilt is will determine how big your wave is because this is a little bit of math. And if this distance from here to here, if it's 25 inches, then you can do five times five is 25. There are five waves. You have to have an odd number for a wave, not with a scallop, but you and need an odd number with a wave. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of move ahead a little bit so you'll have an understanding of why we're, why we're shooting for that 25 inches because we're going to use the ruler and we're going to do this, this first wave. I don't know if you can see the numbers, but 
Here is a five, and there's another five. That's a five inch arc. You start in. Yeah, you go in, and then you go out. That's the second, and then the third one goes in. Fourth one goes out. And if I only had four, you can see it doesn't it doesn't meet right. <laughs> that, that's not. Won't that's work. why you want to have like five or seven or nine arcs for your quilt. So and the smaller your wall hanging is, the smaller the um, little wave that you want to have. Yeah. So 25 and 25 and a half is my goal. And one half of 25 and a half is 12 and three quarters, which I'm going to center. And I'm using, this is a 20 inch ruler. Yeah, it's actually 20 and a half. So we have to trim one quarter at a time. So if you forget the measurements, they're in the book. Yes. <laughs> Okay. We didn't leave anything to guessing, huh? So I've got 12 and 3 quarters on these two corner on these two points. And then isn't this nice how the diagonal line goes right through the center of the of the block? I don't know if that's on the camera. Oh yeah, you can Can you mm -hmm. see that? And then also looks like the 17 inch line kind of frames this round, the first round. Mm -hmm. So that's all we need to do to, to trim. We're just going to take a little sliver off two sides and then, you know, turn it a quarter she turn. She fake cut. I fake cut. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Usually I press a lot harder. I wonder what she's oh, doing. Oh, I'll do. I'll it's do. okay. Yeah, I'm not going to cut it. It's too much work. That's good. Okay, now we have a new Here's color it. way. I, I was just trying to use all the colors. And this has the border. Um, it's a five inch strip all around. And we're gonna get out my our little corner. Do you template. see you have a little template on page 10? That's your corner template, and just make that on template plastic. Okay, so let me just show you what you get with your scallop ruler. I know some of you have these. These have been out since the Magic Vine. And in case you didn't realize it, all the directions <laughs> are inside. I've heard people say, oh, I threw away the directions. Oh. Don't throw them away because there's an entire <coughs> book It's 16 inside. pages. Yeah, it shows, tells how to do the scallop, the vine, or the wave. And there's a couple features in the very last page. These are the different sizes of corners, and it depends on how wide you cut your border. Um, in, in this, on this five inch border, this is, it says five inch border. I don't know if you can see. Well, I guess Eric, Eric can see it. Yeah, go in yeah. close. But we did include that with your pattern. You can just trace it onto the plastic. And then these. this is where we're going to start in each corner. And the point on the, on the template just, uh, just goes right to the uh, the third, is that the fourth round? Yeah, we'll, and then we'll line up the straight edge with the seam. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Oh. I forgot to tell you. You know the Eleanor that I was named after? She came to the quilt shop one day. Oh. That was amazing. And she was a quilter. Can you imagine? That was really cool. Pardon me? Oh, she came because it was me. Yeah, she oh. knew that story, too. So I just want to show you one thing while Patty's looking for a I matcha. found it. That, okay, that so pen there is also a chart in the back of the book that actually does all of your math for you. I'm, I'm looking at the vines and waves, the scallop ruler. 
um, inside that you just figure out, you know, what size, what size of your border that you have and it'll give some suggestions as to what size and how many to make. And there's one for the uh, wave and one for the scallop. Right. So you just Two measure charts. your quilt. Yeah, so let me, um, let's see. Okay. Let me so, do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, that, uh, that first pen, that last pen was a little uh, dry. Yeah, you, you can't leave the top off. Okay. And, and yeah. Okay, so we're going to just do two opposite sides. Okay, and, and your illustrations are on page 11. Now, on this quilt, I, I really tried really hard to make it come out exactly 25 inches. Let me just see. Yeah. Ooh. 25 inches. And this is from one corner to the next corner. Now, if yours is not, don't worry because you just get to do a little math. <laughs> okay, see, that's 25 inches. Ah. And what if yours came out, say, somebody give us a number? 26 and a half. Oh, 26 and a half? They come out at 26. Okay, well, you would just divide it by f five, as assuming that's, that's the number of arcs that we've decided. I suggest that you keep your arc within between like five, six, seven inches. It's a nice, gives you kind of a nice, easy curve to work with. But, um, and then I'm going to mark with my ruler every, let's see, we'll take the long ruler and now this line that I've drawn, drawn on the curve, it should be like one inch in from the edge. And then if you place the one inch ruler line right on the edge of the fabric, then I'm going to, oh, you know what? It's better to mark it. Let's do from the one. Right. That's what that, I was going to say. Thank you. That would be a lot easier. Yeah, you watch me and tell me yeah, when I make I was going to tell you. Let me know <laughs> when I make a mistake. Okay. So I'm just going to go five inches and put a dot. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Yeah. Make a good dot. Better back up. Back up. Okay. Five inches. That's six. That's six. Oh no. That's okay. I don't have Just my glasses. Okay. Uh -oh. Does this remove? Well, yeah, you I use wanna, the white end. I want to tell you. Mark it at five and then if, remove it. If the you read the directions, it says use a leaded pencil. This is what I do at home. I use a, a, a number two pencil with an eraser because I make mistakes just like that. It's so easy. So what? take off the white cap. Put this one back on. Okay. Okay. And I'll do the you, white one. Yeah, and take the white one. Oh, and remove good. It. Oh. Oh, I like that. Cool. Oh, good. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and she did it on purpose. I just did. To show I, did. You. I did do it on purpose. Thank you. Boy, am I. Boy, am I lucky. I used that. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let's try it again. So five, and now we go to what's my next mark? Ten. See, make isn't it dark enough easy? so they can see? And then the next one. Fifteen. And then next one. So actually, 20. she's doing even fives, but you know you can start on one end and mark five, and then ten, and then go to the other end and mark five and ten. And if there's a slight difference, it can be right in the very middle, and nobody will know the difference. But if there's a big difference, you'll want to adjust the length of your wave. So if it was, you could do like four and three quarters. There are increments on the ruler that you can line up. Now we're going to start 
with the five inch ruler line. It's marked off five right here. It's yeah. upside down. Can you all you. see that five? Right here. Okay. And you see how it goes to the next dot? And there's dot. five there. And then to make it look nice and straight, there are little, little, little increments on the right. edge on the side of the ruler, <laughs> and yeah. and I'm right I'm kind of make sure you place on the same the same marking on both sides. See here it goes in about well three three little marks from the center from the edge, and then this one at the same place, and then just connect the dot. And one thing that's really important, it says vine or wave. Don't do what I did, and I've done this a hundred times, and I, tr I did it the wrong <laughs> way, of course. Oh. And I had to use my eraser. <laughs> so, and it's, it's just a totally different curve. So make sure it says vine or wave, and we'll just put it right on the five and draw and this is going to just connect to that corner corner curve we'll go to the five first one goes in next one goes out yeah and oh and no oh, and then you can check your increments on this edge here those are also going to line up with your border cool um, Teresa says if your border is really wide, you're, um, you might not be on, a, on your border. So I don't know what you do then in that case. You just try to keep it straight. That's good. Okay. Oh, and generally we do start work from the outside to the center. Yeah, and then the center, you can adjust the size if you need to. Okay. Once you get it all marked the whole way around, just do a straight stitch on those lines. Just do a straight stitch. So now you, when you, you layer it and you quilt it, but you just quilt out to the line. And I, I'm trying to find, you said it's a corner that's open, and I'm like, oh, it is? <laughs> I guess this is, this is, okay. Ah, uh, okay, but, but look at this, see? Look how the quilting is with the line, with the outside edge. Oh. I was just trying to show them how this was where the stay stitch line was. And you can trim like a, a eighth of an inch past the uh, past the uh, edge, past that drawn line. Okay, so you have the bias strip, Patty. Let's get it up oh, here. Okay, it's two and a quarter. Cut in the bias. Uh huh. You and gonna, you're gonna sew it or just fake it? I don't know. It? I'm gonna fake, no, fake it. Fake so. She said, "Am I gonna show it?" So, so this is what the seam looks like whenever you sew the bias together. This is, we'll probably have to do this in another lesson because this is, our lesson was the fussy cut and marking the scallop, marking the, so, wait, right? Yes. Okay, but, but just let me show you uh, here. Yeah. So then... This is the bias stitched down. You, you trim one eighth inch away from the edge and then your um, beautiful binding, look how beautiful, is just stitched. And Teresa's been doing it both, both sides by machine. It's, you just have to ease it around the corners and, and then you from, uh -huh, yeah. from the front side and then it's turned to the back side, and she had that fused down with something. It was cool. Glue. glue. We. Oh, you know that's how you do that. Yeah. Oh, what kind of glue so, is it? You just use a white glue. Yeah, yeah white oh. glue. Oh, it really is. Oh no, gosh. I know. Wow. You've got it all to do. That's how she did it so oh. fast. <laughs> Oh, That's, she came back in five minutes oh. and it was done. <laughs>
<laughs> now we know. Our, lo our long arm quilters have been bringing, delivering quilts to us five minutes before the program and they just take white glue and they just glue it down and <laughs> stick it down and then, but you've got to stitch it sometime. <laughs> this is how I learned to do the wave if you don't feel confident in marking your fabric, if you're not confident with your sizes. You can just take some of the tape from your adding machine. I don't know if you still use that. I'm old fashioned, but just. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> just draw a line an inch from the edge, and then you can just practice and see if your measurements do indeed work the way That's you want them to. That's a good tip for a Yeah, and then another tip. That's here's, a good tip. Here's another quilt. Um, no flowers. If, if um, I like plaid, and I walked in the quilt in the day, and we had a new batik, and I had to re I had to go home and sew it Whoa. right away. So if you want to make a narrow strip, I did this two and a half inches, and then I added an extra inch and a quarter, so it would give me that 25 inch. So you can be flexible with your sizes, with your measurements. Cool. Now hold okay. it up, hold that up, because it's really pretty. It uh, looks like picnic time, doesn't it? Yeah, I have a, I have a picnic tablecloth that's exactly like this plaid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh? OK. Yeah. Wow. OK. So I hope you enjoyed the first Zillian program. Lots of information. Thank you.